What's going on YouTube? John here. Thank you for joining Blue Carbon Reefing. Today we're going to give you an overview per request on the filtration, the sump area, uh, the plumbing and everything downstairs. So I'm going to start up here just so I can show you the overflows and kind of start there and kind of follow the flow as it goes all the way through my system and back upstairs here to the main display. Uh, this is the main display, which for those who don't know, is roughly 400 gallons. It's just under the internal dimensions because it's three quarter inch acrylic is 96 by 30 by 30. So I have on this tank, which is custom, two external overflows. Um, on each side, the tank will overflow over the weirs and Going to the outside, basically you have an overflow box. This is why I kind of call it 400 gallons because I believe you got another maybe five to 10 gallons on each side of water that's sitting here. So um, basically I have a bean animal set up where I have a emergency, which is not in use. And then I have a as close to full siphon on this side. This is actually one when you go downstairs is the one that's um, the one that heats the tank back up. And then this is the gate valve, which I have it set up where this one basically barely flows the water up into this one and this one's doing the rest of the work. Um, so basically it's just drilled through the floor and I will show you the other side just in case. Because this side has the three drains as well as the return. So this is your one and a half inch return that comes up and basically goes to the top here. I basically shrunk it down from an inch and a half down to one inch and then that one inch goes to the four corners of the tank. So I do have ball valves in all four corners. If I want to change up the flow right now they're all open full which I believe and I'm totally estimating it's around 3,000 gallons that's being returned and pumped up here. So I'm getting about 750 gallons per corner. Probably not exact. This side probably has maybe a little bit more and the far side is probably getting a little bit less. So uh, we're going to go downstairs. I'm going to start exactly looking up at these drain lines and go from there. Okay, so this is the far side going through the floor. Uh, piping goes under the steel beams that basically are doing the majority of supporting the weight and does a run and comes down and this is where I am now heating my tank from my hot water heaters. I have two 50 gallon hot water heaters with the house and I basically plumbed in what would be called a titanium heat exchanger that one of the drain lines comes in and brings water back to the sump and I am just cycling or circulating hot water from the hot water heaters through this titanium heat exchanger, which then will heat the titanium heat exchanger up and that will in turn hurt, heat the salt water back up. The fresh water never touches the salt water, just the heat from that in the hot water heaters. So it's really super efficient. My electric bills were really, really high last winter and I did this and I no longer use electric heaters and I absolutely love this. Anyone who has a larger size tank, I would say maybe three, four, five hundred gallons or above, this is where it's definitely going to become more efficient to do this instead of electric heaters because electric heaters, which run all the time, especially in the winter time, uh, get really expensive. So, uh, following the drain lines down, they have all of them meet. So these are the drain lines that come on the other side, uh, as well as the return that goes back up. They kind of all meet in a certain spot and then they're going to come down to, I have multiple sumps and tanks down here, but essentially it comes down to this section right here. Um, this is where I used to have these heaters. These heaters now are no longer in use as a backup. So if the tank ever gets below 70, so I think 74 degrees or something like that, these will kick on, but other than that, they're never in use. So if the tank, for some reason, the hot water heaters don't work or something fails, I at least have something that's gonna make sure that uh, it's gonna send me an alarm and it's going to, um, of course, turn these on just as an emergency to try to you know, keep the tank at a certain temperature. Um, 
I do go in and out of using filter socks. Right now I am. Uh, when I stir the sand up or do things uh, upstairs or I'm doing stuff around, I do throw the filter socks back in. Uh, I don't always use filter socks, but right now um, I'm back using filter socks at least for the next week or two or you know until I go through. I do have 15 of them and I kind of cycle through and I clean them up all at once, so I'm always cycling five at a time. So after it goes through this sump, now this sump actually, just to give you the dimensions of it, this is a uh, 5 foot by 30 inches. Um, and height wise, I'm going to say it's, I'm, I'm going to say it's probably 24 inches tall. So I can measure it out if you're really curious about it. but. Uh, I don't know how much it estimate. I would estimate it holds maybe about 100, 125 gallons of water uh, because most of it is about half full. Um, now I have two protein skimmers here. I have a Reef Octopus 200, which is really old. I actually had this on a 125 gallon that I used to have many years ago. And then when I bought this tank and got all this set up, I got a Regal 300. Uh, this thing is a beast. Um, huge. Now that one sits basically on the glass and then this one I built just you know, on the 8 crate stand to have this one propped up a couple of inches so the water line is a little bit higher uh, for this one because it shouldn't really be in 9 inches uh, or so of water. Then it just goes through, I just did double weirs. Uh, again this is a custom built tank uh, that goes to the return line. I just really wanted to get all the bubbles out just in case from all the skimmer section and stuff like that. Um, and then it can go back to the return. So basically you're going to come off of here and go down to the main pump, which is going to then pump back upstairs. Or I have a Vectra M1, which takes the water along the floor down all the way. And I'm going to follow it along the wall here. But essentially down along the wall to this 300 gallon tank here. So comes along the floor, comes in here. Now the point here was this is just extra water volume. This is a 300 gallon plastic tank. Um, I originally planned this out and just wanted the extra water volume stability, all your parameters staying stable, um, you know, as well as um, any other benefits that might come along with extra water volume. So some of these things were add-ons, but the water essentially comes comes up here. I originally only had the one hole that drains back to the frag tank. So the frag tank is here. Uh, and then the frag tank obviously drains into another sump down here. And then this pump pumps water back into this section again here. So as it goes through everything here, before it goes back upstairs, it's going through this section again, going through the filter socks again, going through the protein skimmers again, and then going back upstairs. So really, there shouldn't be any nasty stuff going back upstairs. It should be clean and everything going back upstairs. Um, that was the plan anyways as I kind of did this. Now, <clears throat> this frag tank, just to give you the dimensions of it, is four feet by 24 inches. And I want to say it's 21 inches tall. Obviously it's not filled to the top, but I think it's around 90 gallons, 87 gallons or so of, of water volume here. So I used to have three lights, but this light I stopped using because it kept tripping a breaker. These GFIs on the wall, which everything is plugged into, used to um, keep going out, which caused a problem because it would kick, this, plug, this pump was plugged into it, and then obviously it wouldn't work, and all the water that would come through here would overflow onto the floor. So after doing that a few times, I kind of learned my lesson and separated everything and I kind of sourced it back to this was the problem uh, specifically with this. I don't know if it's the light or the actual um, ballast right there. Everything's tied into the ceiling and kind of nailed in. Um, <clears throat> now everything on the wall, I, I'm going to go back and clean all this up, but right now I kind of wanted to... Um, get everything going. I've done a lot of changes and stuff over the last year So I will go through and probably do some wire management here once I'm happy with all the equipment that I'm using at this point I've been making some changes because originally I had like mag Ooh, I don't think they were mag sevens. I want to say they were like mag twelves um, And I replaced them and switched those out for the Vectra M1s just because I wanted something that I could dial in and out um, to kind of keep because believe it or not this one is running at a much slower speed than 
the one that's over here. Um, and they have to basically run at the same speed because the amount of water I'm shooting over to this 300 gallon tank needs to match exactly with what's coming through here back to that compartment. So I think one, this is running at 60 some percent and this is only running at like 45 percent. So here's a, this is 15 to 17 percent difference um, in reality and I'm, I'm guessing obviously because this is doing a longer run and it's pumping up water technically the head pressure has got to be strong enough to get all the way up to this which I'm gonna say that's over six feet maybe six and a half feet tall and obviously this one only really needs to have enough head pressure to get up to maybe four feet uh, tall to get back over the, the sump and back into this compartment now the afterthoughts of things that I'd added was I didn't want to have 400 pounds of live rock in my system I kind of like the minimal look uh, of having less rock in the system but I still wanted to have the benefit you know 1200 gallons I didn't want to have you know a bunch of live rock just stuffed everywhere so basically this is just never gets lit it's just basically collecting bacteria to help break down any kind of waste um, I do every once in a while um, you know grab some rocks from here and use it for certain purposes um, so I added this originally first which this is 110 gallons um, and then I did all the drain lines back essentially back towards the floor and it drains <clears throat> right into the sump in this middle compartment um, the marine pure block got added later I kind of won that at the Tidal Gardens barbecue so I just kind of found a use for it here which actually has become a copepod heaven or a copepod hotel I don't know if you can see it but you got nothing but copepods walking through here I don't really see a whole lot of movement, but you can see those are, those are essentially all copepods going in there. <clears throat> so, um, essentially I had, instead of just going out in one direction, it went out in the second direction, and then I added this one because I wanted to essentially up my game when it came to the refugium. I wanted to stop doing so many water changes and I wanted to start investing into something instead of spending a bunch of money on salt. I wanted to invest in, you know, obviously harvesting algae and taking the nutrients back out of the water that would become a little bit more efficient than obviously doing water changes or massive water changes, which personally I think salt, if you're doing massive water changes, and I'm talking on a 1200 gallon system, 100, 200 gallon water changes 10 to 20 percent you know so it's definitely can get expensive if you're doing that every week or every couple of weeks so I wanted to do this and since I've done this I've really seen a huge improvement in my corals um, obviously I now add some things some additives back into the tank but now I'm not doing nearly as many water changes I might only do 100 gallons every quarter maybe and really when I do the water changes because I'm really taking a lot of the the nasty stuff out of this tank or anything if I'm sucking water out of the tank and changing it I am su sucking out nasty dirty detritus filled you know kind of water uh, I'm really not just taking water out for the purpose of taking water out um, so essentially I built this up on a platform so it's a little bit higher than this one and it just gravity drains into this second tank right now uh, I was doing some stirring around so I added these filter socks just temporarily um, but then that will go back and drain into here and then again go back to this system here. So all the water that gets started from that M1 back here will eventually either go to the frag tank or go to the refugium and it all will drain back here and come back up and start up the process all over. So next up, I basically just have a 50 gallon tank that I had bought from the local pet store for a dollar per gallon sale completely blacked it out. I just put a piece of tape um, just along this area and blacked everything else out because I wanted to be able to see the water level of where it actually is um, and how high or how much water is in here so I can kind of keep an eye on it make sure it doesn't run dry or empty. Uh, but this is what I'm using for my auto top off. 50 gallons last me right now about a week and I have to fill this up just every single week. So I have a reverse osmosis system where your product water essentially goes along the ceiling and I'm going to show you the water changing station <clears throat> but essentially it comes down into 
this and I have two 100 gallon containers uh, this one I mainly just use as my RO water RODI water and I will basically use this pump to shoot the water in multiple directions I'll either bring the water from this container into this container which is where I mix the salt um, I will also fill up this 50 gallon tank under here uh, where the water is actually gonna come up here and be plumbed and when it goes back that direction it's gonna go down into the 50 gallon container uh, when I do change water I can fill up basically this sump right here I could also fill up the frag tank uh, I never really use that but I can uh, so at the most I can do is I can only do about 200 gallons of water changes at a time which is about one-sixth of the total water volume I would think so still pretty pretty big water change um, if I were to fill both of these up with salt and change all at once so right now like I said before I'm only really changing maybe a hundred gallons and when I'm sucking out the really dirty nasty stuff that's when I'm replacing it with fresh clean uh, you know mixed salt water so that's my system guys um, I know there's probably a lot to it. It's really not as complicated as it may look. Um, ultimately, I really just wanted to design the system. Uh, as you can see, the frag tank and this sump, which is the main sump, are built up onto a stand. Uh, the idea behind that is I wanted it to be easy to work on and not be on my hands and knees all the time doing stuff. So some of the other things down below, um, you can tell obviously there's a little bit more salt creep down here. Um, get a little bit dirtier, they don't stay as clean. Uh, however, really they're just holding water, they're not being lit, they don't really need to be cleaned that much. So if you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below. I uh, appreciate you guys watching this, hopefully this uh, gives you guys an idea of the system. I really tried to make this as easy as I could to manage. It's a lot of water volume, however, not a whole lot of display. I would say two thirds of the system is obviously down here in the basement. Um, the really the biggest things that I deal with is uh, consumption of energy, which this pump consumes a lot of energy, you know, being able to shoot the water back up. But the benefit to me of all the space that I have, you know, to have all this extra water volume and really keep things stable. Uh, my biggest thing was, you know, that extra water volume is gonna, you know, help with stability of your parameters. Uh, if there's ever a problem, you know it's not going to happen as quickly you'll be able to kind of correct things as long as you're properly testing uh, however what you may see especially if you guys have been watching some of my other videos with nitrates um, once a certain parameter starts to get out of control you know doing massive water changes to me is just not economical um, I would rather try to spend more money into doing things where you've seen I have you know added this sulfur denitrator um, you know trying to do what I can to make my nitrates come back down because I don't want to spend I'm gonna guess I'm gonna have to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars in salt uh, and probably keep doing so by doing just water changes by itself so that is it that's an entire overview of my system if you guys have any questions leave a comment down below uh, if this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. Hopefully you like what you are seeing. I will definitely have more videos coming out in the future. So if you'd like to see more content, hit that subscribe button as well as hit that bell notification so you can be notified of any future videos that I have coming out. Uh, once again, thank you guys, and we'll catch you in the next one. Happy reefing.